Mike here from Bikes by Mike with another cycling related video. Today is Maintenance Thursday. I'm going to show you how to do a bearing reset on a Cannondale Lefty Osho fork. Okay, let's get to it. In today's video, I'll start off with my opinion on what makes a Lefty fork so great and how it differs from all of the forks. I'll then explain what needle bearings found in the Lefty do and why a manual bearing reset is sometimes required. And lastly, I'll show you the official Cannondale bearing reset procedure for both the carbon and alloy versions of the Lefty Osho fork. So I've already made a few videos on mountain bike suspension. One on the reasons why you need to maintain your suspension regularly. A second on how to reverse the lockout configuration on the Lefty fork and Fox rear shock. And the last one was on how to dial in the perfect mountain bike suspension. But nowhere in those videos did I mention the need to do a bearing reset. Honestly, I didn't even know about this until a viewer suggested I do a video on it. I really should have known better, but heck, I screw up all the time. Plus, it's not mentioned until page 21 of the Lefty Manual. Like, who gets to page 21? This video is not supposed to be a review on the Lefty Fork, so I won't get into too much detail on why I like it so much. But if you're a skeptic and you don't understand how the Lefty can outperform traditional double stanchion forks, then I'll give you three good reasons. But you're already watching this video, which means you already have a Lefty, which means this is pretty useless advice. Send it to your non-Lefty friends. First, the Lefty is stiffer and stronger than a typical fork. How can that be, you say, as it seems counterintuitive given it's one-sided? But there are three design elements that contribute to its stiffness. The first is its three-sided keyed stanchion tube. Rotation or twisting of a fork is not what you want because it creates a sloppy feel. And traditional forks, which are designed with an inner cylinder sliding within an outer cylinder, are prone to have stiffness issues. They attempt to solve this with the fork arch and axle, which kind of fixes it, but not perfectly. Since the lefty is single-sided, it can't rely on an arch or an axle to do this, but it has a better solution. The Lefty Osho stanchion is three-sided, which keeps the stanchion moving in perfect alignment with the outer fork tube. This torsional stiffness you get with the Lefty reduces front wheel deflection and steering precision, which you really do feel while riding. Next, unlike traditional forks, the Lefty has an upside down design with a stanchion located at the bottom. This is actually the best way to design a suspension fork and it's commonly found on many high performance motorcycles. The reason it's done this way is that by placing the stanchion at the bottom, you make the fork body both stiffer and thicker at the head tube where leverage is the greatest. And the final design element that builds fork stiffness is Cannondale's single crown design. Having just one stanchion frees up weight, which Kendall then uses to make the rest of the fork incredibly strong. In using only one stanchion, they can use those weight savings to overbuild the rest of the fork. The way the Lefty design is better than traditional forks is that it has half the aerodynamic drag of a typical dual crown fork. That's because you're reducing the frontal area drag of the fork by 50%. Any leading edge on a bike is going to create aerodynamic drag, and placing two big tubes at the front of a mountain bike is definitely going to disrupt airflow. We are still in the dark ages when it comes to aero testing on mountain bikes, so almost no data exists. But for sure, some riders have already figured this out. That is why at this year's Leadville 100 mountain bike race, you saw so many of the top riders, including the men's category winner, Keegan Swenson, placing fairings, these ugly things on their fork stanchions to reduce aero drag. But is there a better way to reduce aero drag? Hmm, how about choosing a fork with only one stanchion? The third way the lefty is superior to other forks is the way in which it controls movement of the stanchion tube inside the outer tube. The lefty uses needle bearings, which not only can handle high loads, but also run buttery smooth. Traditional double stanchion forks with round tubes use bushings. Bushings are nothing more than plastic rings, and they suffer from stiction or static friction that needs to be overcome before the fork moves. This results in poor small bump compliance. Mm -hmm. 
I've talked about why needle bearings improve fork suspension performance, so they really are a good addition to have on the lefty. But unlike bushings, they require some simple maintenance to keep the fork working as it should. Over time, the bearing set can slip down, pulling the outer steer down with it, which reduces your travel and the distance in which the oil damper inside is allowed to extend. Beyond reducing the full travel of your fork, a drop in the bearing cages can make the rebound feel harsh. In versions of the Lefty before the Osho, there were four, not three, needle bearing cages that could move entirely separate from one another. So instead of the bearings being perfectly aligned like this, one or more of the cages could slip down and create misalignment. This misalignment is no longer a problem with Lefty Osho forks. All versions of the Lefty Osho now come with only three needle bearing cages that are linked together with one nylon sleeve. This keeps them perfectly in line with one another and significantly reduces the frequency of requiring a bearing reset but it still doesn't completely prevent them from slipping down and affecting travel over time. The good news is that while the bearing reset process on older Lefty models was complicated and usually had to be done by a bike mechanic, the process is now super simple. Cannondale themselves suggests that riders do it every 50 hours or so, but sometimes it's needed more frequently. So yes, this is more maintenance than other forks require, but it costs nothing, takes only a few minutes, and is a small inconvenience to have the best performing fork on market today. So I say. The bearing reset process I'm going to show you applies to the Lefty Osho carbon and alloy models only. Most other Lefty forks have a slightly different process, especially older Lefty models using four independent neo bearing cages. The process for those is more complicated, requires a special tool, and sometimes a trip to your mechanic. You want to perform this procedure with a front wheel on the floor. I'm using a repair stand to help prop up my bike, but you can also do this with the bike leaning against a wall. Start by sliding the travel indicator o-ring on the stanchion tube up against the wiper seal. This will make sure you get a correct reading on the current placement of the needle bearings. Now remove the valve cap and attach your suspension pump to the valve. You may want to record the air pressure measured on your pump, but I don't pay too much attention to that. The reason is, and this is my tip for today, is that it's better to rely on the amount of measured sag, not air pressure, in determining if you have enough or too much air in your fork. Most pumps bleed out a bit of air when you attach and detach them from the valve, so it's almost impossible to know exactly how much air pressure you have in the chamber. So don't worry about pressure too much, just make sure you have the desired amount of sag. Yes, some pumps like my Silka Ultimate Shock Pump have a two-stage zero loss chuck. So you can't rely on those types of pumps for accurate pressure readings. But most of the pumps out there do not have the two-way valve, so be aware. Now push the shock pump bleed valve button to let all the air out of the lefty air chamber. You'll hear the air bleeding out and see the shock itself drop downwards. Some pumps may only read as low as 5 or 10 PSI, which is plenty low enough and won't affect your ability to do the bearing reset. My pump shows 0 PSI, so I know the air is all out. Toggle the bleed valve on and off while compressing the lefty by pushing down on the handlebars. You want to feel the shock bottom out several times. This bottom out process is what will realign the bearings to their proper position. You'll now need to grab some kind of measuring device. You can use a high precision ruler, but a digital caliper will work the best. Make sure to zero it out before you take your measurement. Now you want to measure the gap between the travel indicator o-ring and the edge of the glossy stanchion tube. For the Lefty Osho 110 and 120 fork, you want that distance to be 4 millimeters, give or take 3 millimeters either way. Basically a gap that measures 1 to 7 millimeters. If you're not getting that amount of gap, repeat the process of pushing down on the handlebars to compress the fork. And that's it. You're done. You've successfully completed a manual bearing reset and will have restored the full functionality of your lefty fork. All you need to do to finish this up is to pump air back into your lefty fork to your desired air pressure or to your desired amount of sag. If you don't know how to go about dialing in your suspension properly, check out this video I did with a link in the description below. And that's it. That's how you go about performing a bearing reset on a lefty Osho fork. 
If your lefty is starting to feel overly stiff or the rebound dampening isn't working like it did previously, try the bearing reset before looking to other solutions. It only takes a few minutes and will restore proper functionality of your suspension fork. For those of you watching that have a lefty, I'd be curious to know how often you perform a bearing reset, or if you even knew that one had to be done. That's all I got for today, folks. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe as allow me to produce more content for all of you. See you next time. Happy rolling.